Welcome to everything you didn't know about Die Hard with a Vengeance. Hands down one of the best over the top action flicks of 1995. And here's all the wonderful trivia that goes along with it. Originally titled Simon Says, where Zeus was scripted as a woman and was considered by Joel Silver as the third sequel to Lethal Weapon of 1987. 20th Century Fox, however, did not agree to sell the script to Joel Silver. Die Hard with a Vengeance had an estimated budget of $90 million, had an opening weekend in USA of $22 million, a gross USA of $100 million, and a wonderful cumulative worldwide gross of $366 million. Even though the film's domestic box office was only about $100 million, its massive international box office was about $266 million, which made it the highest grossing film of 1995 worldwide. It is one of the few movies that could manage to become the highest grossing film of the year when its domestic box office was not even in the top five. It finished 10th. In the DVD commentary, Jonathan Hensley says that the first hour of the film is his original Simon Says script word for word. He only changed the characters from the script so that it would actually feel like part of the Die Hard franchise. Bruce Willis suggested Samuel L. Jackson for the movie. Jackson was thrilled. He says he's seen the first Die Hard 1988 film maybe 30 times. Lawrence Fishburne was the original choice to play Zeus Carver, but turned down the part. When he reconsidered the decision, Samuel L. Jackson had already been cast. When McLean is dropped off in Harlem, he expected to be dead in four minutes. When the gang members across the street from Zeus's shop discover McLean is wearing the I hate you know what sandwich board sign, four minutes have actually elapsed in real time. The studio told screenwriter Jonathan Hensley to remove all scenes with McLean walking around Harlem wearing a sign that says I hate you know what. They allowed him to keep the scene when he threatened to take the script to another studio. The sandwich board that Bruce Willis wore while filming in Harlem was originally blank, rather than text, to ensure no one was offended by the racist message. The I hate you know what was added with CGI in post-production. Some television broadcasts use an alternate version where the sign reads, I hate everybody, which is sometimes erroneously said to be the original version of the sign used for filming, but this too was added with CGI in post-production. Samuel L. Jackson said that Zeus is the closest character to my personality of any that I've played. Samuel L. Jackson's look in the film was Jackson's idea after he'd done extensive research on his character by studying books on Malcolm X. Sir Sean Connery was director John McTiernan's first choice for the role of Simon Gruber. He turned down the role, saying that he didn't want to play such a diabolical villain. On April 19, 1995, exactly one month before the movie was scheduled to be released, the Alfred B. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City was bombed by terrorists. Director John McTiernan did at one point consider either editing out the opening bombing of the department store or moving the release date back, as he felt the American public might still be sensitive to bombing due to recent events. Fox Studios decided to go with the original version and release date, stating that the film was a work of fiction and already completed long before the real-life events had occurred. In the wake of the Oklahoma City bombing, 20th Century Fox took out trade press ads defending their decision to continue with the imminent release of the film about a terrorist planting bombs in public places. Screenwriter Jonathan Hensley says the idea for the film's plot came to him when he imagined what would happen if one of his childhood friends, who was injured after Hensley threw a rock at him, decided to seek revenge on him as an adult. The water bottle riddle came from a problem on an exam that Jonathan Hensley, the screenwriter, couldn't figure out. The park, on top of the Wall Street station in the film, was a vacant lot that was made into a park for the film. It was turned back into a vacant lot after filming was completed. The chase scenes in the tunnel were filmed in the New York Water Tunnel No. 3, an unfinished aqueduct connecting the city to the Catskill Mountains in upstate New York. As in Die Hard 1988, the German spoken in this movie is mostly grammatically incorrect. A few lines are so wrong that they have to be considered gibberish. Most notably, the exchange of fake cops who are given the briefcase bomb by Zeus, Samuel L. Jackson. In the German release, however, all of the lines that were German in the original movie are grammatically correct, fitting the context and some of the terrorists even have an East German accent. Director John McTiernan called the plot frail and outrageous. I hope people enjoy its ridiculousness. Bonnie Bedelia, the actress that plays John's wife in the previous two movies, declined to return for this third installment. Sam Phillips, a pop singer in real life, was invited to screen test for the role of Katya based upon a photo from one of her CD covers. Samuel L. Jackson had sandbags tied to his feet so he would sink in the underwater shots. According to a quote from John McTiernan, it's very dangerous to have an actor drive a car. Accidents happen every year. And so a stuntman drove the cab from a rig built on the back while Bruce Willis pretended to drive in the front. This is the only Die Hard film in which John McClane didn't risk his life to save Holly or either of his kids. 
John McClane doesn't kill a bad guy until over an hour into this movie. That is longer than any other Die Hard movie. The stuntmen weren't acting when they were running for their lives from the subway car. It was traveling at 45 miles per hour. It took four tries to get the Mercedes to flip. They eventually had to put an air cannon underneath it. The filmmakers really did pull the pickup truck off the bridge with a boat. John McTiernan declined to direct Batman Forever 1995 in order to make this film. This was the first Die Hard film to feature a female villain. Both the subsequent sequels also have female villains. Anthony Peck, who plays Ricky Walsh, the cop with the badge number 6991, was also in Die Hard 1988. He was credited as Young Cop. This is the second film in which Samuel L. Jackson's character steals a kid's bike for police business. The first film was Loaded Weapon 1, 1993. Bruce Willis also had a cameo in the film as John McClane. Each film in the Die Hard series contains a key scene involving an elevator. Jeremy Irons, the main villain, does not physically appear until 50 minutes into the movie. John McTiernan says a bus came six inches from crashing into Samuel L. Jackson's head. About half of the traffic was real, and the other half was added in post-production. The first version of the screenplay was based on a speculative script by James Hagen called Troubleshooter, which involved terrorists seizing control of a Caribbean cruise ship while John and Holly are on a honeymoon cruise. The idea was abandoned after Under Siege 1992 went into production. The script later became Speed 2 Cruise Control of 1997. Katya and Simon's sex scene was added in the last minute because John McTiernan knew the film would get an R rating and he might as well put a sex scene in it. Jeremy Irons is the only Academy Award winner to play a diehard main villain. Some of the bad guys in this film are big, but some of them are actually standing on boxes to loom over McLean even more. Sam Phillips, who plays Katya, the German female, was relieved her character was mute throughout the movie, but as time went on, she wanted more and more to speak. Sam Phillips said that the sequence where Katya uses a knife to slice up a security guard until he is dead was hard for her to film, but she also admitted that it became easier when she noticed the actor playing the guard looked sort of like a real person she despised, Rush Limbaugh. According to director John McTiernan, hundreds of girls were hanging out of windows to watch Willis, shooting on Wall Street. Writer Jonathan Hensley was detained by the FBI after completing the script for the film because he knew extensive information about the Federal Gold Reserve in downtown Manhattan. Hensley stated that he got all the information from an article written in the New York Times. You would actually need 480 dump trucks to steal all the gold from the Federal Reserve. Director John McTiernan acknowledged the errors concerning the gold in the dump trucks and its respective weight. McTiernan and Samuel L. Jackson were permitted to lift a genuine bar of gold to get a feel of how heavy gold really is. Although he wasn't hired for the film, Alan Rickman is still credited as playing Hans Gruber in McLean's flashback using stock footage from Die Hard 1988. When Zeus Carver, Samuel L. Jackson, picks up the gold bar at the Federal Reserve, he says, damn, this is heavy. A standard gold bar kept at the Federal Reserve weighs approximately 25 pounds. McLean only has two bullets at his disposal to kill Simon in the final scene of the movie. He also only had two bullets in Die Hard 1988 to kill Simon's brother, Hans, and his last remaining henchman. When McLean enters the Federal Reserve and encounters Carl disguised as a security guard, Carl tries to have a casual conversation with McLean. There are two instances during this exchange in which his dialogue would potentially blow his cover as an American. Before he and McLean enter the elevator, he asks McLean what he thought about the weather and says, it feels like it's gonna rain like dogs and cats later. Not only does he misquote a fairly standard English expression, but he also has to think about it a bit as he is trying to sound more American. He then calls the elevator a lift, another mistake that would have given away that he is not an actual American. Despite not being set at Christmas, it still references Die Hard 1988 and Die Hard 2 of 1990 with sarcastic comments regarding Santa Claus. The shoplifting kids also say, it's Christmas, you could still City Hall. While in the aqueduct, McLean further mentions, we got a report of some guy coming through here with eight reindeer, and then shoots the terrorist and continues. They said he was a jolly old fat guy with a snowy white beard and a cute little red and white suit. I'm surprised you didn't see him. McLean driving a car through Central Park was based on a fantasy Jonathan Hensley had about being able to cut through the park to avoid traffic. The final fight scene between McLean and Simon takes place at a truck stop in Quebec. The scenes were filmed at a TA truck stop off I-95 in Jessup, Maryland. The scenes involving the subway bombing were filmed in an abandoned nuclear missile silo in Charleston, South Carolina. It was calculated that the value of the gold in this movie was worth approximately $100 billion. In 2015, this value has been adjusted for inflation so that $100 billion of $1995 would be worth $157 billion in 2015. Some of the violent and bloody scenes from the film had to be cut down for an R rating after John McTiernan's original cut got an NC-17 rating. For example, cuts were made on 
some of the death scenes, and the fight scene between McLean and Targo was heavily cut. If you look closely during the scene where McLean beats Targo with a chain, one moment he is hitting him with it, and in the next shot, when Targo is on the ground, he has the chain around his face. Well, looks like that about wraps it up for this trivia session, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this talk on Die Hard with a Vengeance. This is an awesome movie, and I just couldn't let it pass by. So make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying these trivia videos, and come join me next time where I use only a whip and a gun to search for the relics of our long-lost past. Until then, keep watching that cinema, and stay cool, guys.